In this segment, we're looking at Jean Irish, another name familiar to Fort Collins folks because of Irish Elementary. She was a teacher that taught and then became a principal, one of our very earliest female principals, and uh, is also known because many, many years ago, she wrote kind of the definit definitive biography of A.H. Dunn, who was a superintendent for many, many years in Fort Collins. Jean Irish is portrayed today by Brenda Hernandez, who is a teacher at Irish School, and we very much appreciate her donating her time to help us celebrate the 50th anniversary of Poudre School District. So let's take a look at this segment. When I was 12 in 1908, we moved to Drexel, Missouri, and um, continued the education there that I started in in um, Cleveland, Missouri, which is the little one-room schoolhouse. We were farmers, and so our school was a one-room schoolhouse, grades one through eight. And that's actually where I got my first education in teaching, because if you have grades one through eight and you have one teacher, it's a little bit hard to teach first graders and eighth graders at the same time. So as the students get older, they help with the teaching of the little ones. And so I learned how to teach while I was learning how to learn. <laughs> In 1916, I married a man I met in Drexel, Missouri. His name was Bergy Allen Irish. He didn't like Bergy, and he didn't like Berg, so he was known as B.A. Irish. And we were married in 1916 when I was 20. We had one son, William Nelson. He was born November 21st, 1921. And we, we had moved, when we married, we moved to Kansas City. And my son atten started attending school there in Kansas City. And I continued finishing high school. However, I was also able to get a certificate of teaching. And I was teaching as I was finishing high school. So I was already a teacher before I had completed my high school education. In 1916, we decided to divorce. And I and my son moved to Fort Collins so that I could attend Aggies. I wanted to f continue my education. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to go to Aggies. I was studying experimental psychology. And I was taking electives in the tech classes. So I ended up with a BA in science. However, I could not find a position, a teaching position, because I was a single mother. And they said I would have problems as a single mother with a child trying to teach and have a job. So they wouldn't hire me as a teacher. I was hired by a Dr. Avery through Aggies in um, a program called the Child Guidance Clinic. And I helped with testing of students at the elementaries and junior highs. In 1931, through the Great Depression, funding was cut to this program, and so the Child Guidance clinic closed and at that point I was able to get a teaching job. I was hired at Laporte Avenue to teach first, second, and third grade. I would start with the first grade, move on with them to second grade, and move on with them to third grade and so these kids became my family. I knew them very well. Even to the point where, where sometimes when later on in years I'd be in the store and someone would come up to me and they'd say, Mrs. Irish, do you remember me? And I'd be looking at this person with this huge beard and this big hair, and I'd be like, no, I'm sorry, I don't remember you, but tell me your name, and I, I probably can, can remember through your name. So they, they became my, my, my great friends through those years of teaching. In 1938, I had a school change. I went from Laporte Avenue to Washington Elementary, and I taught at Washington Elementary. I taught second grade. In 1942, my son had finished his elementary junior high school education, and he was encouraged by Mr. Riffenberg to join the Cadet Corps. And he was very proud of that. He had one leave home before he was being sent overseas to the European area of the conflict. And I had him go see Mr. Riffenberg so he could show him how wonderful he looked, how proud he looked in his uniform and his cap. He was sent to 
Holland. His first mission was over Holland in 1943, and he was shot down and killed in 1943 at the age of 21. But very proud of what he did with his life and that he wanted to do that for his country. However, it did not change my way of life because I have a hobby and that's children. And so in 1944, I went to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. I went during the summers, I taught during the winter and I went to Northwestern during the summers, four summers, to get my master's degree. Um, the master's degree thesis that I wanted to do was to write a biography. And we had this wonderful former superintendent, Mr. Dunn, who I asked if I could write his bi biography, and he was very, very happy to let me do that. There were 500 copies printed. That one's from the public library. I don't know where the others are. <laughs> but you can read the biography that I wrote about Mr. Dunn, the former superintendent. It cost $1.25 at that time to buy that biography. But I was very proud, very happy to write that biography and receive my master's degree. So that in 1951, I was named teaching principal at Washington Elementary, which meant I still taught classes, but I was also principal of the school. And then in 1953, I became the administrative principal of both LaPorte Avenue and Washington Elementary. And I continued in that position until 1962 when I retired. I was someone who believed in discipline. I believed that children should learn, but also learn respect and work well with others. And so discipline was very important to me. I would not condone cheating ever. However, I did cheat once. <laughs> so I. I guess sometimes it's okay, um, <laughs> depending. We, we taught the Palmer method of penmanship, and I had to get a certificate through that course in order to be able to teach my students penmanship. And I would do my writing work and send it off to the Palmer method people, and they would send it back and say, your whys are not very good. You need to practice your whys. So I'd practice my whys, I'd send it back, and they'd send it back again, and they'd say, no, not yet. So I really wanted to get this done, and I didn't want to waste any more time, and I was not going to get those whys. I don't know why I couldn't. So I decided to turn my paper and write some H's. And I wrote my H's, and when I turned my paper back around, they were beautiful whys. <laughs> and I sent those in. And I passed, and I got my certificate for the Palmer Method. They were lovely wise after I turned my H's around. In 1968, I was given the greatest honor. I was nominated for the naming of a new elementary school. They wanted to name it Irish Elementary. I didn't understand why, because why would you name something Irish when nobody Irish is going there? It would be confusing to children. So I really didn't think that I would win. So I didn't even pay attention the day that they announced it on the radio. My friend had to call me and congratulate me to let me know that I had actually won the nomination. So I made sure that they put the name Jean Irish on the school so that people would know that it was named after a person and that it wasn't about a nationality. But even one day, someone in the store came up to me and they would say, they said, are you Mrs. Irish? And I said, yes. They said, well, I have to tell you the latest. This little kid came up to me in school and he said, why did they name the school Irish? We're all German here. <laughs> so still there was confusion for the kids. But I would, even after I retired, I would attend programs at Irish and I would go to their Christmas programs and to their Halloween parades and the kids always would invite me to come back the next year. And um, I lived until I was 103. I continued being active in the community. I, I continued all my life to be dedicated to children. And um, they continued to be dedicated to me. Even when I was in the nursing home, 
in my hundreds, the children on December 9th, my birthday, would come and sing happy birthday and sing for me from the elementary. So it has been a wonderful honor.